Peace be upon you all. My name is Dania Jodri. Welcome to Gems of Islam, a brand new podcast on the Review of Religions channel. In this podcast, we will be sharing stories of prominent women in Islam. Let's take it back 155 years to 1865 in a small town in India where a blessed girl was born. This girl would become an inspiration for all and she would attain the exalted status of being the wife of the promised Messiah. And she would be the source of a blessed line of four of the caliphs of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community to date. This pious lady is none other than Hazrat Sayyidah Nusrat Jahan Begum. The literal meaning of Nusrat Jahan is helper of the world. Without any doubt, this pious lady lived up to this meaning as she spread her light worldwide and would leave an impact on all. She was fondly regarded as Hazrat Amma Jan. And during this podcast, that is how I'll be referring to her. God Almighty bestowed a great and special honor upon Hazrat Amma Jan as she became the wife of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, the promised Messiah and Mahdi Ahmad. She was a devoted and loyal life companion. Along with this, she was also a loving mother who took great care of orphans and of the sick. For the entire Ahmadiyya Muslim community, she was a spiritual mother. It's absolutely fascinating to see how God Almighty arranged the union of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad and Hazrat Amma Jan. The connection between the two families began with the friendship of Mir Nasir Hassan Sahib, the uncle of Hazrat Amma Jan's father, Hazrat Mir Nasir Nawab Sahib, and the promised Messiah's brother, Mirza Ghulam Qadir Sahib. It was his uncle who then introduced Mir Nasir Nawab Sahib to Mirza Ghulam Qadir Sahib. Hazrat Amma Jan's mother, Sayyida Begum, became unwell, and so Mirza Ghulam Qadir recommended him to bring his wife to see his father, Mirza Ghulam Murtaza Sahib, as he practiced medicine. So, the parents of Hazrat Amma Jan went to the promised Messiah's father, Mirza Ghulam Murtaza Sahib's house, for a diagnosis in Qadian. Hazrat Amma Jan's mother related her first memory of the promised Messiah to her grandson, Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmad, as she said, On the ground floor, your uncle was sitting, and in a tiny room, your father, meaning the promised Messiah, was sitting near a window, reading the Holy Quran. Since childhood, the promised Messiah would occupy himself in learning and writing about Islam. The promised Messiah's father, Mirza Ghulam Murtaza Sahib, checked Sayyidah Begum's health and prescribed some medications. One year later, Mir Nasir Nawab Sahib visited the house of the promised Messiah with his family. But by then, Mirza Ghulam Murtaza Sahib had passed away. The promised Messiah's brother, Mirza Ghulam Qadir, was aware of the unsafe environment in which Mir Nasir Nawab Sahib and his family lived. And so he made a life-changing offer for them to come live in his father's house in Qadian. He even told Hazrat Amma Jan's father that his younger brother, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, would not disturb, as he lived a life of solitude in his own room. In 1867, Hazrat Amma Jan's family made the move to Qadian, and both families grew very fond of each other and were regular in exchanging gifts. During all this time, Hazrat Amma Jan's parents came to know how pious and devoted Mirza Ghulam Ahmad was. Once, Mir Nasir Nawab Sahib said to his wife that Mirza Ghulam Qadir's younger brother is a very righteous and pious man. After many years in 1877, Mir Nasir Nawab's family was posted to Lahore. And when they moved there, young Nusra Jahan was only 13 years old. Although they had moved away, the love and respect for Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad and his family only grew more. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad left a lasting impression on Mir Nasir Nawab Sahib, and he really appreciated Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad's piety and humility. When the promised Messiah published Barahine Ahmadiyya, Mir Nasir Nawab quickly bought a copy and then wrote to the promised Messiah, 
to pray for him on various matters, one for which was to bless him with a righteous son-in-law. It was a manifestation of divine power that at that time the promised Messiah received this letter, he had also been receiving divine revelations about undertaking a second marriage. Allah Almighty had informed him that this wife would be of the Sayyid dynasty and from Delhi. In response to his letter, the promised Messiah replied that Allah Almighty had revealed to him that he would arrange a second marriage for him in an excellent Sayyid family, which would be blessed. Hence, the promised Messiah proposed to marry his daughter and urged Mir Nasir Nawab Sahib to take time to consider this sincere proposal. Mir Nasir Nawab Sahib actually hid the promised Messiah's letter from his wife because he thought she would have some worries due to the promised Messiah's first marriage and the age difference. It is important to note that the promised Messiah's first marriage practically ended due to differences and they mutually decided to separate. During this time, other proposals were coming for Hazrat Ammajan. However, none of them seemed to satisfy Sayyidah Begum Saiba, and she would reject them. Hazrat Ammajan was now 18 years old. After some frustration, Sayyidah Begum claimed, better than any of these would be Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. And this is when her husband showed her the promised Messiah's letter. And they both made the decision very quickly. And Mir Nasir Nawab Sahib now wrote back to the promised Messiah. And that is how the process of this marriage began. This blessed union would not only influence the lives of two families, but also future generations and the whole of mankind. This was a match made by Allah Almighty, and Allah reassured the promised Messiah in a prophecy. I have decided that I will marry you again. I will make all the arrangements, and you will not have any worries on any account. And in another prophecy, Allah said, that God is a true God who had made your son-in-law relationship with an honorable people who are Sayyids and has made your lineage noble, which is a mixture of Persian and Sayyid pedigrees. Despite the age difference or the fact that the promised Messiah was married once before, these things did not worry Hazrat Ammajan at all. All she cared about was his righteousness and his piety. This is a lesson still applicable in today's modern world as most people completely ignore piety and look at superficial factors, not realizing that we have the most amazing role models to follow and every girl should strive to be like Hazrat Ammajan. The promised Messiah and Hazrat Ammajan are known to be a very happy couple and it is clearly visible that in their blessed marriage, God Almighty was always the center of the relationship. This proves that to have a happy married life, you have to have a strong connection with God Almighty. Now, I would like to speak a little on Hazrat Ammajan's relationship with Allah. Anyone who had the honor of meeting with Hazrat Ammajan knew immediately that her biggest passion in life was worship. She never let anything come in the way of her worship, and her relationship with God always came first. Her son, Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ahmad said, she was very regular in her five daily prayers, as well as the Hajjit prayer. He said that the remarkable nature of Hazrat Ammajan's prayers was such that the passion and eagerness with which she supplicated would inspire those around her to engage in Salat as well. Hazrat Ammajan's love of God was reflected in the financial sacrifices she made. She would be at the forefront of making any sacrifices for the Jamaat. A most remarkable example of this was when on May 28, 1900, the promised Messiah made an appeal to raise funds for the building of Minaratul Masih in Qadian. He estimated that 10,000 rupees would be required. Hazrat Ammajan immediately responded by selling her property of her inheritance in Delhi and gave 1,000 rupees for this noble cause. On one occasion, at the time of an early Jalsa Salana, Mir Nasir Nawab Sahib informed the promised Messiah that there was no food for the guests that evening. So he immediately told Hazrat Mir Nasir Nawab to go to Hazrat Ammajan, his own daughter, and ask her to spare some jewelry and sell it. Hazrat Ammajan instantly gave some jewelry to her father. And so 
Mir Nasser Nawab Sahib sold it and that money was used for the catering of the Jalsa guests. Hazrat Ammajan was very regretful that due to all the obstacles the promised Messiah faced, he was not able to perform Hajj. So she generously funded Hafiz Hamidullah Khan Sahib to perform Hajj on behalf of the promised Messiah. Hazrat Ammajan believed that to fulfill any desire of the promised Messiah was not just a personal joy, but a means of winning Allah Almighty's pleasure. Hazrat Ammajan went through many tough trials, loss of her children, demise of her husband, and her migration from Qadian to Rabwa. These were the three prophesied trials for Hazrat Ammajan. But her level of patience, faith, and steadfastness during these challenging times was remarkable. And she showed herself to be a true Momina, a true believer, and a perfect example of a Saliha, a pious lady. Again, this is something we can all learn from and try to show patience and faith when going through challenging times. Throughout her life of 86 years, Hazrat Ammajan's motive was to always win the pleasure of Allah. And we can learn so much from her life by adopting her values and the way she conducted herself so that we too can become true Salihahs. May Allah enable all women to instill faith and righteousness in future generations. As the second caliph of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community said, this great task is only achievable by a woman. Thank you for tuning in to Gems of Islam. For more information on women in Islam and the history of Ahmadiyyat, visit Review of Religions website.